Well, hello everyone. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. I'm just going to go ahead and wrap up these videos proper um, with just a quick discussion on you know now that I've hooked my patient up to the ventilator, the last thing I need to do um, is assess my patient, and I, I just cannot emphasize or overemphasize how important this is. Even though all the other videos up to this point haven't necessarily focused on patient assessment um, but I, I try to emphasize that throughout some of the videos it's always a patient always look at the patient first and um, when we get the patient on the ventilator the things that we need to assess very quickly we need to assess a patient you know, we need to do what you know to do a physical exam if you guys remember from first semester there was something called the IPPA um, chest exam and that's exactly what we're going to do we want to inspect the patient we want to look at them do they have symmetrical chest wall movement? Is there asymmetry? What does their skin look like? How are they overall? What's their general overall appearance and sensorium? You know, do they appear to be in stress? Do they appear to be relaxed? What kinds of things can, can you inspect and visually see? You know, even things like looking at the monitor, you know, the pulse oximetry, heart rate, vital signs, um, all of that. And then the next thing is, <clears throat> excuse me, is palpation actually feeling? You know, do they? Can you feel good chest excursion? You know, do you palpate uh, perhaps subcutaneous emphysema somewhere? Um, and then percussion, while not probably not as important as it used to be, you know, it's still something you can do, you know, fairly quickly. Um, and, you know, it can, you know, potentially help you identify things like um, a pneumothoraces if I have hyperresonance or, you know, maybe I have a, a lung full of blood on a, on a patient that's just come, come out of a thoracic surgery, for example, and I percuss and I notice, you know, a real dull sound, you know, that, that, that could be, you know, a hemothorax or a you know, large pleural fusion. So certainly percussion can provide us with some information. And then auscultation, actually listening. You know, get a, a good uh, listen to the lungs. Uh, obviously, you want to listen to the apices, the bases. Um, you know, compare the sounds that you hear, and then um, correlate all that with other findings, such as vital signs. You know, other things we want to look at. Where's the position of the tube? Is the tube secure? Um, what other equipment does a patient have? Does a patient maybe have a central line? Was it just a, a inserted? Is there any subcutaneous emphysema? Am I worried about pneumothoraces and, and so on and so forth? So a pretty comprehensive patient uh, assessment should should ensue after initiating mechanical ventilation. Um, some other things that will occur a little later on down the line, and, and these are things that we'll get into next week, uh, generally is a general rule within 30 minutes of initiating mechanical ventilation, you need to do an arterial blood gas on the patient. So within 30 minutes, you need to do an ABG. Um, if you make major ventilator changes, you probably need to look at doing an arterial blood gas you know, within 15 to 30 minutes as well. Because uh, if you're doing a major change, that means that there is some sort of anomaly that you're trying to correct. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing a major change. And, it, and clearly, that anomaly... Uh, is, could show up on the arterial blood gas, and, and, and generally, if I make a major ventilator change, it will change um, ABG findings. So if I make a major change, um, I need to be looking at doing a follow-up blood gas after that change. Uh, and another thing that I need to look at uh, with mechanical ventilation is once I in, initiate it, um, I need to look at getting an, a chest x-ray, um, perhaps not in the initial uh, minutes, Following uh, initiation, mechanical ventilation, but but certainly, um, you know, within a, a similar time frame as ABG, you know, within within 30 minutes or so, you want to get a good chest X-ray, find out how their lungs look after you've initiated mechanical ventilation. You know, maybe you have hyper um, hyperinflation of, of an area or hypoinflation. Maybe there's some new infiltrates. Uh, maybe there is a pneumothorax that that that. Um, just develop, you know, lots of different things. So go ahead and, and get a, a chest x-ray as well within about 30 minutes um, of initiating mechanical ventilation. Okay, guys, this is actually the last video um, on the introductory mechanical ventilation series, um, or actually the last video that follows lecture. Um, over the next week, I think I'll try to get some more, uh, to have a couple more videos attached Um to this, this topic of introduction to mechanical ventilation where um, I'll film myself in the ventilator lab and we'll go through a scenario where a patient comes in 
and I actually go through the entire sequence of initiating mechanical ventilation on that patient and I'll actually do that um, uh, with the servo eye that we use in the lab and, and perhaps I'll do it with a couple of the other ventilators as well. Um, so I hope to have those videos rolled out and then of course um, uh, this week we start in on in lecture and lab on uh, the phase two variables and this is you know really managing the patient on the ventilator and then um, next week we will be talking about um, liberating our patient from mechanical ventilation, what they used to call weaning. I, I really prefer the term liberation, but the, a lot of people still use the term weaning. Um, the week after that, we'll be talking about some of the advanced stuff, advanced modalities, uh, looking at ventilator graphics in a little more detail, and, and so on. Um, so hopefully I, get, I hope to get more videos rolled out on those, uh, those topics as well. I hope you've enjoyed this playlist on an introduction to mechanical ventilation, adult mechanical ventilation. Thanks for hanging in there, guys, and take care.